Okay, we are going to do two more questions and then you're going to do some practice. These two questions that we're going to do here, they are going to be in radians and you can identify the fact it's in radians from this bit. I'm going to go a bit quicker this time because I think you can handle the pace. So, who thinks they are going to be able to tell me what sine x minus 2 cos x, what form they're going to choose? Sometimes the question gives it to you, sometimes you can pick the form. Ahmed, what do you think this one might be? What about if I said this? If it started with a sign, what do you think needs to go inside the brackets? Maybe minus two. Not minus 2x? No, there's no numbers that go inside this bit. It would be x minus alpha. OK? Now, this one would be trickier to put into cos. Why would this one be trickier to put it into cos? Tell me what the expansion of cos usually looks like. Sorry? No, not that you're right, there would be a positive, but that's not the reason why, Sam? Yeah, not, yeah, because this cos x is negative, we, the, the addition formula for cos always starts with cos x sine x, or cos x something with sine minus. It always starts with the cos bit being positive, OK? So it's a bit different because this one's the other way around, which is why sine is a much better one to pick here, because it just it fits it nice and easy. So I'll do the expansion. That's going to be r sine x uh, cos alpha minus r cos x sine alpha. And I'm going to see if I can pick these values out without having to do any of those extra bits. So r cos alpha. Who thinks they can tell me what r cos alpha is? One. It's just one. And r sine alpha is just two. So r is equal to the square root of one squared plus two squared, which is the square root of five. And tan alpha is sine alpha over cos alpha, which is two over one. And so alpha is the inverse tan of 2. Make sure you're in radians mode. Yes, always. These, this is one of the most formulaic things you can do in all of A-level maths. It's just do this pattern. Identify the thing you need, expand it, Pythagoras, tan, go. This is going to be something that at the beginning I looked around the room and everyone was just like, Honestly, the faces I could see it looked like you, you didn't look happy at all. And it's not as bad as it looks, OK? So you do the inverse tan of 2, and we get 1.11 to two decimal places. So we finish off by putting it back into the form that they wanted. r is root 5, and we have the sine of x minus 1.11. Same thing, it's just in radians. The skill is in identifying what is the, the harmonic form that you're going to select. And you often will be given it in the question. So you don't even need to do this beginning bit yourself. But that's why I wanted to make it harder. Cos comes after. Yes. You always use R sine because it's easier. Yes. For that, if, if cos is coming afterwards with a negative, then you should use sine. It's possible to do it with cos, but you'd have to negate the R as well, and it just becomes messy. You could use the cos one instead if you wanted to for this one. This one, because it's positive, because you could have rewritten it as 6 cos 3x plus 8 sine 3x, and you could then use the cos one if you wanted to. Should we just do that? Should we use the cos one? Let's, let's use the cos one, OK? Uh, no, let's use the sine one. We're, we're going to stick, because we've done the cos's before. We're going to do these with sine. And so it's going to be r sine of what? 3x plus alpha. 3x, loads of people sometimes just go like, oh, it's x. No, you have to match the argument that's already there. So that's r sine 3x cos alpha plus r cos 3x sine alpha. I mean, if the arguments aren't, if these two arguments are not the same as each other, you cannot do the harmonic identity. Please remind me, as soon as I finish this example, I want to show you what happens on Desmos if they're different arguments. Very good question. You get r cos alpha is, who thinks they know what r cos alpha is? 8. 8. And r sine alpha then must be 6. 
So r is the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared, which you should be able to do in your head. 10, because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so it's a 6, 8, 10 triangle, similar. And then tan alpha is sine over cos, which is 6 over 8. So alpha is the inverse tan of 3 quarters, or 6 over 8. We're in radians mode. And we get 0 0.64 to two decimal places, meaning that... 8 sine 3x plus 6 cos 3x is the same as 10 sine 3x plus 0.64. And then Zahir said to me, what if the arguments were different? So I'm going to put that in Desmos while you're finishing writing that down. Okay, so this is 8 sine 3x plus 6 cos 3x. A couple of things you can tell me about this graph immediately. What features of the graph do you spot that are apparent here? It's been stretched up to where? Yeah. To 10, because the value of r is 10. So that makes sense. I'm going to just switch one of the arguments, and we're going to see if we still have a harmonic, if we still have a sinusoidal pattern. I'm going to change this one from a 3x to an x. So it's not really a harmonic pattern anymore. It's got waves to it, but I wouldn't describe those waves as sine waves anymore. So they have to be the same argument. And if I change this, you'll get some weird kind of things, like, it's kind of cool. Like a, yeah, it looks like a spring. Whoa, 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 shh, shh, shh. So you should be, this is if we're going a bit deeper with what graphs look like here. When I look at this graph, I see two things going on. I see two things going on. I see these waves, and then if I kind of blur my vision and zoom out, what else can you see? There's still another wave, and that big wave, which one do you think the big wave is related to? The big wave is related to the cos one because it's got the smaller x. The small waves are because of 6x because the 6x has done a compression which makes the waves go faster. So if I make this more extreme here, So you can see like the tight waves, and then you can see the non-tight waves, which is related to this. Oh gosh, not 40. But you can make some pretty interesting kind of graphs. OK, so what you guys are going to do for me is you're going to do on the Solomon worksheet F, which I've printed for you, questions one to three. I'm just going to try some of these questions that you've got here. What you'll notice is they've given you the, the form for it to go in here. And they've also given you the form for some of the other questions as well. We're just going to do this for a little bit of time, OK?